Greetings, and welcome to the Bowling Green First United Methodist Church. We hope that you enjoy what you're about to see, and you can find us on the corner of Broadway and Church Streets at 11 o'clock on Sunday mornings. Or you can find us at bgmethodist.org and on Facebook at Bowling Green First United Methodist Church. So we are, we're starting kind of a different series this morning. Uh, it's one I haven't, I haven't done a series like this, I don't think, with you all, but we're, we're going to use as kind of the, uh, the basis for this series over the next few weeks, uh, a movie. That's the movie uh, Les Miserables, which you also know is a musical, but first was a long time ago a book. Um, it's one that I tried to start reading the unabridged version of several different times. I've not quite made it ever through the first several chapters of it, but it is, but it is a great story. And we're going we're gonna to use it as we get uh, to get started in this series. And what I love about this, about this story, is that it puts us into a very clear contrast, the, uh, the differences between rigid, unbreakable religious tenets and its difference between God's, uh, between God's abiding grace. But as importantly as that, what it really does also is it shows how hard it is to know what that difference is, both to figure it out and also to live with it, because that's really where the challenge comes, is living with that grace that God gives. So the first clip we're going to watch this morning introduces us to the two main characters and kind of the start of their, their struggle between the two of them and kind of the different sides of things in there. It starts with Jean Valjean, who has been in prison for 19 years and now is coming up for parole. Uh, and uh, he thinks that he is going to be free, but Javert is there to tell him just how wrong he is and about what life is really going to look like for him. The first thing to notice in this, as you look at this story, is uh, what, what uh, prison has done for Valjean. It has made him an incredibly strong man. And we see that strength come to play at other times throughout the story, but he has been made strong in all of the wrong ways. Because his strength doesn't do him a whole lot of good because he doesn't get it. He doesn't get what it is that is going to be happening. He thinks that he has done his time, he's going to be paroled, and he's going to go on. But when he was asked about what he thought that means, do you hear Javert's response when he says, I'm going to be free, Javert goes, no. And then proceeds to lay out for him just what this entails, because Javert works inside of a world that does this, that says, it follows that no human being will be treated as righteous in his presence by doing what the law says, because knowledge of the sin comes through the law. Javert is pummeling Valjean with this. And we're going to see this play out through the rest of this, uh, because Valjean will always be guilty in his eyes. And be guilty, as we saw in the eyes of everyone else around him. It doesn't matter if he's been paroled and he's free, he is always going to be guilty. Now, the, uh, the other thing about this, though, is that Valjean is also guilty in his own eyes. He doesn't even realize it, really, at this point in the story, but he, he sees himself as being guilty. We see that in the way that, that he does things, the way that he acts, the way that he goes on. He also thinks that he is guilty, and that's going to be the hardest thing for him to overcome. But Javert doesn't get off the hook on this very easily either because uh, his problems are coming soon. We'll get to his a little bit next week. Uh, because Javert has this hard lesson that he has learned, that he takes, and it's this one, that all have sinned and fall short of God's glory. That's the lesson that he has learned, and practically for Javert it means this. So every single one of you who judge others is without excuse. You condemn yourself when you judge another person, because the one who is judging is doing the same thing. Javert may not be guilty of the same crime that Valjean commits, but anytime he does something wrong, he convicts himself, he judges himself, he, you know, he knows that he is just as bad as Valjean is, and he can't ever overcome that same place. And so that's the one side of things. That's the way we, we see things from one side. But the other side of this is far, far, far different. Because on the other hand, we come up to where our next clip picks up. Where we left off, Valjean was leaning up, was trying to find a place to rest on the side of a church. Some place out of the way where he could get some sleep before continuing on. And while he 
was there, the local church bishop comes up to him and, and invites him in for a meal, give him a warm place to sleep that night. Uh, but this is where we see that Valjean still sees himself in the way that everyone else sees him. That he still sees himself just as guilty and just as bad because he sees all this wonderful silver, uh, silver utensils and plates and goblets and all of this stuff. And, and he knows that he can take that and he can use it to start over. And so that's what he does. You know, he starts over and he runs in the middle of the night with all this stuff, uh, but he doesn't make it very far. Here's where we get to see Valjean be transformed in all of this. Uh, he meets this bishop, and rather than condemn him, it's the look of, I love the look of surprise on his face when he's brought in, and, and, they, and they say, he had the nerve to say that you gave him this, and everyone's look is surprised, and he said, well, yes, I did. And I was like, wait a minute, we know that's not a thing, but the bishop does something for him that no one else had ever done, and said he for, the bishop forgives him. And doesn't just forgive him, but sets him on a new path. Remember what he says at the end, I have saved your soul for God. We'll see as we go along uh, how that changes Valjean. He is no longer being defined by the law and by those uh, that have stripped him of all his value, and his worth, even his self-identity. He's not defined by those things anymore. Now he is discovering what it means to be his own person because the bishop helps him to see something in different. The bishop shows him the same lesson that Javert learned, but the bishop shows him the full lesson, not just the part of it, but it says, all have sinned and fall short of God's glory, but all are treated as righteous freely by His grace because of a ransom that was paid by Christ Jesus. As we look at this, we look at this story for why it's important. It's, it's important because we live in a world that still does this. That still judges and condemns uh, and it does all of those things. And it has this effect of doing this. You are storing up wrath for yourself because of your stubbornness and your heart that refuses to change. God's judge, just judgment will be revealed on the day of wrath. If you are Javert, if you are someone like him, this is a condemning statement that Paul writes. You are being condemned by these words and the day of wrath is up. It's a day to be feared. This is what that way of being a part of the world teaches and shows us. But we don't have to be defined that way. Because we all have, all of us have, if we aren't careful, we could have, we could fall into this, into this place. Because it says you know, all of the bad things we have done or we perceive that we have done or others have done, all of that is going to come out at some point. It's going to come out on that, that day of wrath. If you are like Javert and you see the world in those very strict and unrigid terms and, and there is no grace there, that is a day to be feared. But if you are someone like Valjean who is learning and growing, his day of wrath has come when he was faced there in front of the bishop with all that he had. And the bishop says, go, your soul has been saved by God. Has been saved for God. It's a very different statement. That says, all that you have done, all of those things, all of those people, all those places, all of those situations that have defined you, have made you who you are, have determined your worth, your value, your very identity, you can let go of all of that now because God is the one who does the defining, not all of those things. Go and be who God wants you to be. When, when I see this story, when I read this story or watch it, or when I read through the book of Romans, I always end up coming back to this place in John's Gospel where Jesus said to the Jews who believed in him, you are, you are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teaching, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. This is what God gives. This is what Paul is describing. We are made to fear the day of wrath that it is there, but this is the day where God says, remember, I have taken this from you. This is what you have to let go of so that you can be free. You have faith and believe. You can be free from all of that, from all those other things that define you, and let God define you instead. And that is where you find your true freedom. God offers us that freedom, and through it our faith can be found, and God can change us, but we have to let Him do it. And not just us, because a lot of times what we need, we've got to take that out to other folks. We know folks who need to 
see that exact same thing. And they need to know that hope and that freedom that comes from Him. And we need to share that message with them also, so that they too can find God's grace and know what it means to be truly set free and defined by God. I invite us to go out into this week and the weeks and months to come and let God change us, define who we are, and turn let us go and share that with others so that they also can be defined and changed by God's deep and abiding grace. And let us go and do all of this in Christ's name. Amen.